so what do we want to do? Well, we definitely want to do um, direct substitution always first, okay? So I'm going to plug in a positive infinity here. So I'll have an e raised to the negative infinity, all right, times the square root of a really big number. Okay, so now this is a constant, right? raised to an, an exponent that's negative that's getting really, really big. So let's do some, to think this through, let's do some laws of exponents. All right, can I not, since that's a negative exponent, can I not do one over e to the positive infinity, laws of exponents, all right, times the square root of infinity. All right, now this hopefully is easier to see one over something that's getting really, really big. This is gonna go to zero, all right, so zero times, all right, if I take a square root of a really big number, what do I do? I get a really big number, all right? So square root of infinity, I can just kind of think of it as infinity, all right? This is an indeterminate form, definitely indeterminate form, but it doesn't help us with L'Hopital's rule because I don't have a rational function right there, okay? So because I got this, I want to rewrite, all right, to use L'Hopital's rule. So what are we gonna do here? we're going to rewrite the limit, okay? Now, this is easy. Think of your laws of exponents, all right? So this right here is e to a negative x. Well, if I've got a negative exponent, what can I do? I can move it to the bottom, all right? So I'm gonna rewrite that problem to be the limit as x approaches infinity. We're gonna leave the square root of x on top we're gonna move that e to the negative x down to the bottom. And then what, when we move it to the bottom, it becomes positive, right? So now I have a rational function. So now if I get in another indeterminate form, then I'm gonna be able to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, I don't know. So let's test this out here. Let's do a direct substitution and see what happens. Okay, so if I plug in square root here, I'll have a square root of infinity over e to the infinity. All right, well, we've already said if we take square root of a really big number, we get a really big number. Okay, so we're getting our infinity there. We've got a constant raised to a really big number, something that's approaching a really big number. This is going to then approach infinity. All right, so now there's my indeterminate form that I can use now, L'Hopital's rule. So we rewrote the limit first. Now I'm gonna do L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so again, we're gonna try to do this. Uh, yeah, we'll try to do this in our head. Okay, so the limit as x approaches infinity. Whoa, kind of crazy there. All right, so this would be x to the one half. I'm gonna come over here. All right, if I'm taking the derivative there, what will be uh, one and one half x to the negative one half? All right, so yeah, we can do that in our head. So one half x to the negative one half on top. All right, e to the x, e to the x, e to the u, u prime. My derivative there is just gonna be a one, right? So I'm just gonna get an e to the x. Okay, now I am gonna go ahead and move this down to the bottom. Let's clean that up a little bit here, a little bit. So let's do the limit as X approaches infinity. Let's write that as one over two square root of X. All right, I think when we do our direct substitution, it's gonna make more sense, e to the X there. All right, so are we ready for a direct substitution now? Yes, okay, get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. All right, so plug in infinity. Okay, so I'm going to have a 1 over 2 square root of infinity, all right, all over an e to an infinity. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Let's uh, actually, that's complex fraction, right? So can we multiply through by the least common denominator? All right, let's do that. Let's multiply through by the least common denominator. So multiply through by 2 square root of infinity and two square root of infinity. Okay, so that's gonna go away. So really, I'm gonna have a one over a two square root of infinity times an e to the infinity. All right, so looking at that denominator, what, this is gonna be a really big number times two. This is a constant raised to a really big number. So again, a really big number. And my lights are going out because I'm sitting in a room by myself. All right, so what? This is all getting really, really big. So a constant over something that's approaching a really, really big number goes to zero, okay? I was literally doing a lot of extra steps in there, but just to kind of make sure you could follow this. Okay, so if you don't have a rational function here, 
you cannot do L'Hopital's rule because L'Hopital's rule says you have to have an f of x over a g of x. You got to have that rational function. All right, so you would start this like you do any other limit problem. You do that direct substitution. You still don't get an answer. You could, but in this case, you've got that indeterminate form. So then, okay, we can't factor this algebraically. We can't rationalize a numerator. We can't do any of those other techniques that we know. All right, um, so then that means keep in the back of your mind L'Hopital's rule. If I can rewrite and I can form a rational function, then I can use L'Hopital's rule. All right, that's the whole point of this. Okay, and then of course, obviously we know that we can always go to a graphical approach. This lesson I'm trying to do an algebraic approach. Okay, so because we've got to be able to do these algebraically, but we know you can also do a numerical approach with a table of values. Okay, and you could, all right, if you had access to a graphing calculator, you could look at it from a graphing standpoint and then see what the limit is doing as well. Okay, but the focus here in this lesson is the algebraic approach.